Hi, my name is Deepak Mahotra and I'm a professor of negotiations at Harvard Business School. I'm also the author of the book, Negotiating the Impossible, and co-author of the book, Negotiation Genius. In this series of videos, I'm talking about the topic of negotiation, and in each clip, I talk about one key insight, an approach, a tactic, a principle, something that I think will help you negotiate and navigate your own deals and disputes. In this video, I want to talk about the comparison between negotiation and chess and five ways, five important ways, in which negotiation is not like the game of chess. And the reason I bring this up is because often people think of negotiation as a game, and they'll often liken it to something like poker or chess. And it's a perfectly fine metaphor or analogy, unless you take it too seriously. Because if you start treating your negotiations like a game of chess, you're going to make some fundamental mistakes. Here are five ways in which negotiation is not like chess. First of all, chess is a zero-sum game. Whatever is good for them, by definition, is bad for you. They win equals you loss. That is not necessarily the case in most of the negotiations you participate in. There are ways for both of you to benefit. There are ways in which to create value together. There's benefits to cooperation and not just competing. So if you treat every negotiation like a game of chess and adopt a zero-sum mindset, you're probably going to end up losing opportunities for creating and capturing value. The second way in which the game of chess is very different from negotiations is that in a game of chess, the other side knows what its goals are. They know what they're optimizing for. They're trying to take out your pieces and they're trying to eventually capture your king. That's not how it works in negotiations. You can't assume that even they themselves truly know what their objectives are, what they should be optimizing for. A lot of that will depend a little bit on how you actually engage with them. They themselves may not be sure whether they want to collaborate with you or compete with you. They may not be sure what they should be pushing for and where they should be a little bit more flexible. So unlike in a game of chess, you can't walk in assuming that you know what they want or that even they know exactly what they want. Their interests, their own incentives may themselves be endogenous to the negotiation itself. They may evolve as the game continues. The third way in which uh, negotiation is very different from the game of chess is that in a game of chess, uh, we often assign point values to different assets. A pawn is worth one point, a bishop is worth three, a rook might be worth five. And regardless of the game you're playing, more or less these relative values stay constant. Certainly they can change a little bit depending on the kind of player you're playing against, but these are largely consistent across games. Rooks are just that much more important than pawns. Queens are even more important. That's not how it works in negotiation. The assets that you have, the assets that you may have leveraged in your previous negotiation may be worth much less now or much more now in this negotiation with this other party. Whether it's limited time, whether it's your alternative offers, whether it's your reputation, whether it's that you control the process or you control the frame of the negotiation, these things can be much more or much less important across different negotiations. So it's incumbent upon you to really audit the value of the assets that you have and what is and isn't going to be of leverage in this particular negotiation. The fourth way in which chess and negotiation are very different. In the game of chess, all the action is at the table. The parties are there and their moves and your moves determine the outcome. In a negotiation, you need to keep an eye on the entire negotiation space, which is just my way of saying all the parties that are relevant to the negotiation, whether they're at the table or not. And so success or failure in the, quote, game of negotiation may depend a lot more on parties that aren't even there, obviously playing the game, but are somehow influencing the negotiation anyway. So you need to broaden your view and broaden your scope and zoom out a little bit to make sure that you do well in this game of negotiation by keeping an eye on all the parties that can influence this game but aren't sitting across the table from you. And finally, the way in which negotiation and chess differ. If you take a break from a game of chess and go grab some lunch and come back, the board should look pretty much the way it did when you were sitting down previously. Uh, if you take a five minute break and you come back, you don't expect the pieces to have moved unless the other party came in and started to cheat. That's not how it works in negotiation. As time goes on, the pieces in the game of negotiation can move on their own. When you come back, when time goes on, as a negotiation drags on, the conditions themselves might change. The setup might change. Your leverage 
or your strength or weaknesses may change. So as a negotiation goes forward in time, and if it's not happening all in one sitting, you need to make sure that every so often you reconsider and audit once again. What are the interests of all sides? What leverage do we have? What are the constraints that each side has? Are people's perspectives changing? Because if you don't and you assume that things stay where they were when you last left off, you might miss important opportunities or might get hurt or have negative consequences because you missed things that have changed to your detriment. So if you think of the negotiation as being different from chess in those five ways, you're going to be a much more effective negotiator and maybe even a much more effective chess player. Again, those five things are one, negotiation, unlike chess, is not a zero-sum game. Two, the goals of the other side may not be clear to you and they may not be clear to them either. Three, the value of the assets may change in negotiation in ways that they don't change as much in the game of chess. So you need to audit again, what are your sources of leverage and how might they differ this time versus in the last negotiation you participated in. Fourth, there's a lot of action away from the table in a game of negotiation, which doesn't happen in the game of chess. And finally, as time moves forward, even if you're not playing the game, your negotiation might be changing in ways that you need to be aware of. Whereas in a game of chess, things usually stay the same when you walk away and come back to the board. Good luck in your future negotiations.